Hello, and welcome to another amazing episode of your favorite podcast, Closing Deals in Heels. I'm your host, Kayla Hodges. And today I wanted to bring out a very special woman for my ladies that are in real estate. Listen up because this woman is powerful, amazing, incredible. Tasha Goins is in real estate and also as a single mom has paved the way for her to be able to finally focus on real estate and makes them things happen for herself. So she's going to be sharing her story today as well as giving you insight on what it takes and what is necessary in order for you to actually make sales in real estate and actually make things happen. So really fast, welcome to the stage, Miss Tasha. Hello, Queen. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I am super excited. And um, I know we were talking a little bit earlier, but I wanted to bring you out here and first just acknowledge you for being super strong and powerful and having the willingness to, you know, show what it's, what's necessary and what it actually takes in order for you to make things happen, you know, not only for yourself, but for your little boy Lincoln and for the other women that are listening to this right now, needing to hear that refresher that they have every single thing inside of them to figure it out. So thank you for being here. Um, I just really appreciate you. Well, I am honor to be here and to have learned a lot from you in the last few months. So I appreciate you asking me to be here. Absolutely. Um, so tell us your story. Who is Tasha? I know you're in real estate. I know we wanted to understand a little bit of how you got into real estate, but if you can give us a background, I think that'd be really helpful. Um, background. I grew up in Sierra Vista, so a little small town. Um, and I definitely believe growing up in a small town, like if you don't leave it by the time you're 21, you're probably going to be there for forever. Yeah. So I moved up to Phoenix when I was 19 and I was like, I'm not gonna be close to family, I wanna be close to friends, but mm -hmm. worked full time in college, got my degree, had this whole ambition to be a lawyer and that didn't work out because I had my son. And I think once you have right. a child, I think your perspective in life changes a little bit. So you were going to be a lawyer and then you had Lincoln and you're like, hey, I need a pivot or what happened? Um, so I had him and I stayed in the service industry just mm -hmm. because I felt like um, time wise, I could really dedicate to being with my son in his younger years and yeah. still work, but not take away a lot of time. I think a nine to five, you're with your kid for a couple of hours versus maybe working a little bit at night and you're only missing a few hours. So for me, psychologically, I felt like that was the best move staying in the service industry as a mom. Um, but then I met someone at the hotel that I was working at, it's at the Camelback Inn Resort, and it was a guest. And he just said that I was, you know, really good with people. And he went from running hotels to now selling hotels. And he felt that like, you, you could sell one thing, you can sell anything. So he told me I needed to dream bigger. And a week later, I got my real estate license. And I went to wow. school. So it was a very simple, I feel like he was like my angel kind of changed yeah. him. But I think also kind of circling back to wanting to be a lawyer, I think real estate is a protective environment. So you are still dealing with legalities, but also still servicing people as well. So with the guy that talked to you, I mean, I feel like there's those people in our lives that give us permission all the time, mm -hmm. you know, like, have you ever seen the guy again or like was it just a nope. one he was i say he was my little angel never seen him wow. never seen him. It really was like maybe a 10 minute conversation and he changed the whole trajectory of my life in many ways wow that's really incredible i think that there's so many times where we don't realize that we're being the angel for other people and we're you know just about our normal lives and being willing to see somebody and pour into them for just maybe 10 minutes of time that could change everything for them you know i I think that's really beautiful. Talk about the service industry. I um, I was in the service industry myself, right? Like nine, it was 10 years. How did that help you in sales? How did that help you in real estate? Like what's your perspective of that? Ooh, I think it's helped in so many ways. I mean, I've always said at the end of the day, you can be the smartest person, but if you don't have people skills, then it doesn't matter. Yeah. And um, being in the service industry, as well as working at a hotel in the service industry, um, you're dealt you're dealing with hundreds of people every day so mm -hmm. i think you can pick up personality traits pretty quickly like someone's coming to the table you're like i don't want to serve this person they're already angry but yeah learning body language naturally you can see it um i think people skills is something that you just you learn because you're thrown in that environment daily so mm -hmm. able to communicate 
and it's not a fear of mine because I've just, that's part of what I've done for forever. Mm -hmm. And it didn't start off that way, right? As a service industry person, you know, being a waitress, being, you know, in um, cocktail, being a bartender, being a trainer, like any of those positions, you have to do some type of shadowing. You're following someone around and they throw you in. Typically they do some type of like test on you or they're watching you. I don't know about you, but I had to do that so many times where I walk up to a table and I forgot what I was supposed to say, what I was supposed to do. It's so awkward. Or they tell me something or I forget somebody's order or something like that. And I think that those were the reps yeah. that we put in <laughs> to make it to where it's not so bad now. But for anybody that hasn't put in reps like that, whether it's like being in the service industry or learning how to cold call, learning how to door knock, you know, doing something like that, that's going to cause you to feel really uncomfortable and sound really awkward at certain points of time. Like you don't have that backbone that's being developed and sometimes you're a little harder on yourself for sure. For sure. And I think also like the recovery aspect of like, okay, this person's angry, but like, I'm going to win them over. Like yeah. I'm going to make them happy by the end. And so I think even relation with like real estate mm -hmm. on the phone or if it's in person, it's like, if someone's angry, that doesn't scare me. Someone yelling at me or cussing me out because I'm like, okay, they're just upset. I'm not going to take it personal, but I can figure out a way to recover if yeah. there's a recovery. Yeah, absolutely. I think when I first first went into fine dining, I went and I worked at Capitol Grill and I was 20 years old and they didn't want to hire me on the spot because they said I didn't have enough experience. And I looked at the guy and I was like, if you just put me through training, put me through training and at the end of the first week, if you don't like me, I'll go my separate way. I promise you I'll be the best decision you've ever had. And I was like really confident and arrogant, you know, young. And um, I went through all of that. And the Did first thing that they serve at 20 there? Yeah, I got hired at 20. And I was one of their top um, sales or like people. And I would sell the most wine. So I figured out really quick that if I learned how to sell wine, I made more money. So I was like studying to be a sommelier. And I eventually became a wine director at 21, which was insane. But the... Insane. The biggest thing that they had was like all these different core values. And one of their core values at Darden is um, exceeding clients' expectations. Mm -hmm. And I think that was the biggest thing that I brought into sales that I think that is really, really great in real estate. So I wanted to ask you, sometimes exceeding people's expectations. You know, I've heard of uh, realtors that even sell like homes where they do an open house and they bake cookies and they put some paint right by the front door where it smells like a new home. And they had go above and beyond to try to have this experience for people or they somebody buys their home and they like bring them a gift or go above and beyond, just be memorable, writing cards and stuff like that. And I really appreciate like realtors that do stuff like that. What do you do or what's some tips that you would give to like a new agent or somebody that's learning kind of how to navigate the ropes on how to exceed some of these expectations? Um, listening to people just in general, right? Like for me, if it's coming to a closing gift, for instance, I know like a lot of real estate agents, they have pre-made gift boxes. So for every client, they all get the same thing, which mm -hmm. yes, is great. But at the same time, like, you know, if my one client likes a bottle of Pinot Noir, like I'm, I'm going to listen to that. Like if I'm walking through someone's house, I'm looking at the details of their art or, you know, if they're into cars or whatever it is, it's like just picking up on people's mannerisms. If they like sports, like, can you add something to that? Um, I, for me, if I go on listing appointments, typically like when I leave, um, I'll send them tumble cookies and just telling them like, thank you for having me over. Like, even if I don't get the listing for me, I just have learned like relationships over transactions. Um, mm. And so that's something that I really do believe is at the end of the day, how can you just be memorable to somebody and genuinely care about them? You know, genuinely care. I feel like that's missing so much from society, from jobs. Everyone is kind of concerned right now with, you know, restaurant prices, grocery prices, there's all these different new levels of things that we have to pay for. And the fact that people are getting on calls with salespeople and they feel like they're just there to like take something from them or that they only care about themselves or that they're only there, you know, to make sure that they make money. 
it, it changes the game versus if you can prove that you genuinely care about that person and that you're there for them and not for you, it changes the game for sure. Um, have you experienced like changing the narrative and like being more authentic in your sales process since you've learned some of like the skills and stuff that we've gone through and learning red um, and being able to apply that to where it actually feels genuine and you show that you care? Oh yeah. I mean, I think at the end of the day, the big reason why I wanted to get into red was um, like a long game for me was like, okay, if there's top agents, and I'm going against them for a buyer or a listing, how do I stand out? And at the end of the day, it's always going to be not necessarily your process, mm -hmm. but your communication skills. And, yeah. you know, we all love to be heard. I mean, that's what people genuinely love to speak like that. So learning how to ask the correct questions yeah. um, to dig deeper, I think it gives you more of a better perspective of them, of their why which mm -hmm. makes you want to do more for them because you're like, I need to help them sell this house because if I don't, they might have another mortgage for X amount of time or, you know, they can't get to. So I think learning the correct questions and having that skill, um, you can have a deeper relationship with your clients as well, which yeah. I think is important because it doesn't become very transactional. It's, it is more personal and you feel like you're building a relationship with your clients versus just, doing a job for them mm -hmm. yeah and then also you feel better too for sure Absolutely. <laughs> it feels good you're like hey if your heart's in the right place if something happens with a sale right that's out of your control you don't feel that bad because you're like hey i did everything with integrity and I, I showed up 100 and i cared and i poured out versus if you're like oh i need to get the sale i really need to make this happen and something falls through and you're really pissed because you know, we're never thinking about that person in the first place yeah you know, and sometimes maybe that person's not really like they're not as eager for that sell as you are. So if you come across as desperate, then they're yeah. not, they're not going to like that. I think even coming back from like service of, you know, selling food of some sort, I think mm -hmm. um, you're just so used to being quick and bubbly and having people get in and out or whatever it is. Yeah. And I think with sales with real estate or whatever, um, you have to take a step back and be like, do they really want this right now? Or is this me wanting it? And mm -hmm taking stuff from me like, oh, okay, um, I'm doing this for me right now. That's not fair to them. Yeah. So let's talk about being a single mom and actually needing a sale though, because there's been many times in my, my world, right. Where I'm like, I need to make rent. I need to take care of stuff. There's been times where I fed myself or I fed my kid and didn't feed myself and went to bed, like having little like snacks of like random things that like don't seem appetizing. Like, you know, a can of like peas or something. Just like, like, why is this in there? I have no idea how long it's been in there, but this is what Cereal I do. With no milk. <laughs> yes. Yes, exactly. Um, so how do you, cause I have my ideas for this, but how do you show that you're not desperate when you are? You know, cause there is some times where you need that seal and your kid needs you and you want to pay for something and it's rough. How do you show that you care more about the person than the sale and remove that desperate energy? Even if it's something that you really need to close right now. I just remove it and I'm just like, okay, um, I need to go find my ACE. Right. So I think real estate sometimes is a long game. You're going to have people that are not ready to sell for three to six months to a year or whatever it is, but you got to respect, you have to respect their timeline period. Yeah. And I have to, that's, that's my job is to respect their timeline. However, that just means I need to call more people or I need to do more letters or whatever it is to find a, a client that maybe is ready now. So for me, mm -hmm. I, I try not to, um, get into the perspective of forcing somebody okay. it's more of like i need to put in more work to find somebody who might be ready now mm -hmm. yeah no i like that that's uh it's like about taking action on the other side i think i'm going to add to that too because it's also an internal thing as well um and like choosing to surrender in those moments right of hey um i really need to close this and then choosing to trust the process yeah. Right? So it's like, Hey, it's coming. I'm doing everything that I need to do. Just like, let's be here. Let's support this person. Let's get timelines and let's show up for them then. And let's find another one and it's coming and it's there. And having to speak that over yourself, I think is very 
powerful and empowering and it's not woo woo or fluffy because you're actually doing the actions that it would take, but you're also implementing that type of stuff as well. I think it's, it's really helpful and it's definitely helped me talk myself out of a hole before for sure. Yes. And I think, you know, having budgets and structure in your life and knowing when to scale back and, and when you can actually spend a little bit more money, you know, um, I think it just goes back to structure in some ways. Yeah. And we talked about this earlier. So we were talking about masculine structure in order for the feminine to feel safe and flow. Do you yes. Want to, to that? Um, yeah. I mean, I guess for me, I, um, I definitely need a lot of, I need a structure for me. Like I can be complete scatterbrained. So mm -hmm. I have to have a very detailed schedule, like from the time I wake up, what I'm doing from the time I wake up to when I start calling people to literally when I go to bed. Is yours color coordinated like mine too? Yeah. Yes. Yes. And I actually, for the most part, though, I am like a handwriter because I like to like check mm -hmm. off. Okay. I'll use the notes in my phone so then I can erase it. Um, but I have to have structure because if I don't, then I'm just going to be like the free spirit that wants to just go grounding and like meditate and look at yeah and cry or whatever it is but i also know for me it's like i need to be very structured so then i can like thrive in my feminine um but i also do believe i'm one of my first mentors in real estate she was a woman and she said that you know it's good to look at how men operate however mm -hmm. men and women we live very different lives and i think yeah. for you as also a woman as, and as a mother you can't grind from seven in the morning till 11 o'clock at night, six days a week. And like, mm -hmm. it's not fair to your child. Yeah. And it's not like, we're just not wired the same way. So we have to have a different skill set to condense what we do in a shorter amount of time. Mm -hmm. um, how do you condense? I like, I try to put on my calendar, like specific time that I'm doing stuff, like with my kid and like, here's my structure, but I can do anything in that time. Like, how do you condense? So during the week, um, I typically tell like my clients or most people in my life in general that I, I have my phone on do not disturb from seven o'clock at night to eight in the morning. <laughs> like literally no one, you can text me, you can call me, you can email me. But to me, I'm like, that is my, my time with my son. You know, I give mm -hmm. a lot to two and a half hours before bedtime where that's just us. Um, and then obviously if he has his sports on like the weekend or, you know, whatever his practices, like if I have to step out and make a call, that's fine. But typically I do automatically have, um, seven to nine o'clock at night. And then I try to have Sundays as a day mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. And it's so important to them, but we don't realize how precious those moments are. You know, I think last night, my daughter and I, we were playing war and Skipbo, and we sat there for two hours playing these card games. And I'm like, what are we doing? But she was having the best time. I was like, okay, I will play this game with you. I didn't know how it was going. She was really upset that I won the first time. She was really happy that she won the second time. But it's so beautiful just because those moments are so small. And I think it's so precious and I need them, you know. And it doesn't have to be spending money, right? It's, it could be yeah. just like hard games. Like me and my son, we play Uno or we play checkers. And like, that's fine. We don't always have to go and do an event. But mm -hmm. I think having that one-on-one -on -one with them is very crucial just because yeah, any relationship needs one-on-one, -on -one, right? Yes. Yes, exactly. Um, I wanted you to talk about uncomfortable situations that you've been in with men and sales. Has Have you been in a situation where somebody made you feel like like they're flirting with you in order for you to get a deal? Or like, what, what have you been through? I'm curious. <laughs> I feel like I've been through a few. Um, I think it can be a very interesting dynamic especially when you're going into a home of a couple um okay and you're trying to you know the male is obviously maybe like the driver of the relationship and so you're trying to communicate with them but you also want to you know make eye contact with the woman make her feel safe um but i've definitely had situations where you're just like whoa you're a married man and mm -hmm. you want me to like represent you but like you're sending me dms like, I don't think that this is an appropriate situation. Yeah. So trying to navigate that 
I could see is like a challenge, you know, it's like, you want to help the family, you want to help them. Do you, they're not really crossing the line, but you know, they're crossing the line or, mm -hmm. um, when clients want to take you on a date versus having you go show them homes, you're kind of like, okay, what line is this going? And I think for me, walking with integrity is it's not worth the sell or you as my client, you're kind of wasting my time. So I can go find another buyer or seller that's actually going to respect me as a woman as yeah. well, their representative. Didn't you tell me somebody recently was telling you how cute your feet were or something? What, <laughs> <laughs> what did you say exactly? <laughs> um, I had a previous client text me asking me if I had pretty feet. I thought they were in person. No, they just texted you that. That's no, even just like on this when I was like, I'm not going to respond back to this. You have pretty feet. I'm like, no, I have disgusting feet. They're so gross. Like what, what kind of question is that? <laughs> I'm like, why are you thinking about my feet right now? Anyways, like so this odd. is weird. So this is so weird. Yeah. But you know, I'm like, okay, well, I'm glad that you're a past client. That doesn't mean I have to do business with you again. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay. The walking into people's houses though, and making the wife feel comfortable. I think that, you know, you start learning about that at sales um, and um, like awaiting tables. Yes, definitely. Cause you pick up on the body language. Cause I remember walking up to a table and I'm like looking at the woman facing the woman the whole time. I barely talked to the guy and I'm like, yeah, she's the main prize. I'm making her feel special. Cause I don't want this girl being mean. And my tip goes down. Cause she thinks that the the guy's into me or something like that. The drink down first, like, Oh yeah. Yeah. Anything that she, she's the main thing. So when you're walking into these um, houses and it's a couple, how do you navigate that? Because yeah, make eye contact, but what else do you do? Do you, do you talk to her mostly? Do you ask her opinion? Like, how do you make her feel safe? Um, it's a great question. I haven't really thought about it. Like in my actions, I think probably just from working in the service industry as a whole, um, more natural. Yeah. I think it's just like a natural experience at that point. I think if, even if she's not like the main speaker, like obviously again, I think if he is the driver or whatever, I think it's making contact, eye contact with her. It's asking her if she wants clarity, if she wants expansion, you know, if, if there's anything that I can do for her as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think when you're leaving, you shake her hand first. Yes. And you say like, thank you so much. Um, I think I always try to get her contact information as well. And I, I will follow up probably with her, even if he is the driver, I still will probably call her first and be like, Hey, do you and your husband, da, 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 thank you for having me over. Even if I write a handwritten letter, like I write their name first, the woman's name first. Like I'm very big on writing a woman's name. Mm -hmm. Even on contracts, like yeah. wife's name is first. That's really interesting. I've had a, a couple of clients of mine that told me that they put their clients with a man and a woman in the same group message and that they won't just message the man too, which I find interesting as well. Like, mm -hmm. hey, like, we're going to go look at these homes and stuff, which is unfortunate um, because the reason why, you know, is that you don't have any idea what this woman has gone through. We have no idea of the context of the relationship. We have no idea if she's been through something bad before in the past and we just don't want to trigger her. And then she's like, I don't want to work with you. you yeah, know? because, you know, at the end of the day, your intentions are pure. Exactly. You're like, I don't want her to be alluded that I'm like doing this because I want her man or I'm doing this because I really want to sell. So I'm going to flirt with her husband. Like none of that is ever, ever something that I would ever want, you know? Yeah. Or, you know, not her, not trusting her guy. Cause you don't know what's going on with them. You know, there's so many aspects of what could possibly go wrong. I like to remove liabilities regardless okay. of what type of sale I'm in. I'm here to remove any possible liabilities that could happen. I'm going to make sure to extra pay attention to <laughs> because I'm not going to have a sale room by something that's outside of me by past trauma from somebody else or whatever. I'm like, no, 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 no. Like we're just going to remove all those issues for sure. Yeah. 1000%. Um, I was going to ask you, Tasha, like how does, how does a woman finally step into like what it takes in order for her to become like the woman that she truly wants to be the woman that can make her own money. That is not the depend on anyone else that like can rescue herself that loves herself. Um, you mentioned before that you had worked, you know, two jobs to make things happen for yourself. 
well, like what what would you say it would actually take for somebody to really learn skills and and be in a place where they're making a significant amount of funds that they can have freedom in their life? What would it take for that person? One, it's obviously going to be a lot of discipline. Mm. Um, but two, I'm sure you can relate because I know you were a dancer, so it's still somewhat of sports. And I think having like that background is. Um, correct form and fundamentals mm. you know, just like you know yes i can call 100 people a day but if i'm not having the correct tonality or the like body language or you know skilled questions then you're kind of not wasting you are wasting your time to an extent yeah like, at the end of the day is um learning your craft and i think the fundamentals of body language skilled questions and your tonality doesn't matter what cells you're in. I mean, the tonality for, you know, real estate or maybe door to door might be different than hospitality industry, but it's still a tonality. Um, so I think you have to practice those skills and having the principles of just going all in, but knowing how to do it correctly. Mm. That's so interesting that you said that. I love that. I remember calling 220 calls a day and not having the right skills and feeling like I wanted to throw up every time I looked at the phone, you know, like I had to do that again. And I was still making decent money, <laughs> but I hated it because it felt, it felt so inauthentic. It's so disingenuous and felt like I was trying so hard to bring everything in versus it just being natural and flowy and feeling good. Yeah. I think you, I think having with anything, right. It's like, I could probably do a hundred twirls, but I'm going to tell you my twirl is not going to be as good as yours because I don't know how to twirl properly. <laughs> you know what I, mean? I, I forgot how to twirl. I've been going back. I This was my, actually with today, it was my third ballet class in 12 years. And I can't tell you the mental frustration <laughs> that's going on in my head because I'm trying to do something with my leg and it doesn't have the strength to do what it used to do or it used to turn out and now it's turning in more. So very interesting that you're saying that because even if you've been out of sales for a long time or you switch industries and you pick up a new skill, you have to go back to the fundamentals to relearn it because that's what I'm doing right now. I'm like, okay, fine, I'll stay. I'll <laughs> my, point, my toe, my toes, my toe, when I used to point my feet, like the toe used to touch the ground. No, not even close, right? Not even close. And um, that's it's pointing. <laughs> It's kind of, it's kind of trying to point. Um, but you know, and my, the teacher, she's like, used to be a prima ballerina. She's staring at me. She's like, Kayla, I'm like, I'm just being mean to myself. She's like, Oh, just relax your shoulders. You move them back, move them back. She like yells at me. It's great. Um, you need to go to her class. It's so good. If you're ever, I will. I got, you'll have to take me one day. So I can <laughs> so have, so I can awesome. learn the fundamentals of twirling. <laughs> it's great. And the ladies in there are like way older too. I have, I have two different classes I go to. One of them, there's some ladies that you know, we're in their 50s, 60s. One lady's definitely in her 70s and they are like having the best time. They're on point. Some of them are on point and their lines are beautiful. They're beautiful. And I'm over here struggling. <laughs> <laughs> but um, back in a sales conversation, it's the same thing. Like if your tonality is off and you keep calling, you're going to burn yourself out because you're going to get feel exhausted and depleted um, because you're not going to get results. Or you're going to be like, I'm working so hard, but you're not getting anywhere. You're not working hard at developing the skill. You're just working hard at taking the action incorrectly. Yes. You yes. know, and if I was taking, like if I was doing, you know, turns or pirouettes or whatever, and I kept doing them wrong every single time, but I kept doing them every single day, that doesn't make me better. If I train the muscles to get me to go there and I'm holding it correct and I chain my arms better because they don't look so boxing and roll my shoulders back and I work on like, like bending and plie and like getting up on relevant and focusing on like building those muscles. When I do the pirouette the next time, it's going to be way better form and it's going to go faster and it's going to be more clean and I'm going to be able to do more. So it's really, really interesting. I love that analogy. It's so beautiful. Yeah. yeah all these people. Like that, Cause I'm like, okay, I can, I play basketball. So I'm like, I can shoot a hundred free throws, but if I don't have, proper form like mm. spend an hour practicing shooting a basketball incorrectly so like yes i can make a couple but i'm not gonna ever really get better just by yeah. practicing with the yeah. wrong fundamentals yeah so with skill like cells is a skill everything that you do in life comes back to somewhat of a script and like having correct ways of communicating like even if you're a server or whatever whatever industry you're in but it, it's always going to boil down to you have to have good fundamentals. Yes. And um, when you practice over and over the wrong way, you develop really bad habits. 
that now you have to unlearn in order to do it right. You know, typically the easiest people, you know, to start working with in training are ones that haven't been through like really intense sales trainings versus when I get somebody that's been through, I've been through this course and this course and this course and this training. There's a lot of unlearning that we have to do because the way that they think is not in alignment to like what they're trying to do with their words where they're like, yeah, well, I'm trying to help them bring their guard down. I'm like, well, all the words that you're saying and the tonality you're using is super triggering right now. So like, let's wheel it back a little bit and try this, you know, and once somebody does it in a way where people are actually more open to talk to them and they realize it doesn't have that much, like, um, like pushing through to get somebody to want to buy from you and it's easier. Um, it's so much, it's so much better, but it takes a lot of discipline to get to that flowy state. So it takes a lot of work and hard work to be able to flow. And, and so many people don't want to do the work. They just want to flow now. And then they're not making money and they're frustrated and they are blaming all these other people versus themselves for not being disciplined to learn the skills to make it easy. For sure. And I think with, um, sales, regardless if you're an entrepreneur, it, it's not that it's hard, but it does take a lot of discipline and a lot of time mm -hmm. and if you do it correctly, like, yes, it, it is um, very rewarding, but it, it's rewarding because you're able to actually have conversations with people, which again, I think sales is, is of service. And if you don't really like people, then it's probably any industry of sales is not going to be, <gasps> you know? Yeah. Cause your ego can't exist there. No. Um, sales is not about you at all. It's about servicing others. And so if you are all obsessed with you and you're not willing to, be there for somebody else and try to understand them. Like that's the biggest thing. Like if you can understand your prospect better than anybody else, they're going to buy from you because they're going to feel like you're the expert and that you get them, you know, and if you're just worried about being liked or whatever, like it's not going to work out too well in your favor, you know? Yes. I think you said something really great on one of our morning calls is, um, you can't really just focus on being liked. I mean, I know, for instance, everybody says in real estate, people work with people who they know, like, and trust, mm -hmm. uh, which like is great, but that can't be your primary. At the end of the day, there's a lot of people I like, but there's not maybe a ton of people I would trust with their different aspects. Like I like, a, I have a lot of friends, but I don't trust them enough to watch my son. So realistically hey. with sales in general, it's yes, liking is, is a big bonus and you should want to be kind, but it's not the main ingredient to getting a sell or to doing something for somebody. They have to trust you mm -hmm. and having the correct questions. Um, people feel that they can trust you because you, they've let their guard down with you. Mm -hmm. What would you say to like a woman that maybe is working really hard right now. She's not getting the results that she's looking for. She just feels exhausted, depleted, and she's doing this maybe because she's trying to take care of her family, take care of her kid, like whatever the situation would be. Like, what would you say to her that would encourage her to like keep going? Um, get a coach. Get a get a get a sales coach like you personally. Uh, <laughs> I'm, that, guys. I didn't <laughs> I'm, literally, I'm literally saying that because. Um, I transitioned from being on a team to now just being a solo agent. I can tell you in the last few months, like just the conversations I've, I've always cared, but again, not having the correct questions or, or format definitely makes a difference. Or, you know, I, I've learned like, Oh, okay. Someone's having sales resistance right now. Like just not realizing that I'm not taking it personal, but how to navigate it properly. It, yeah. it has been a game changer for me. So, I think investing in yourself and your skills, period. I think regardless of what industry you're in, there's um, sales, there's always levels and you're never going to, even when you're at the top, there's still a new level. Like there's never mm -hmm. a ceiling in sales. And so if you want to grow, then you need to surround yourself with people who have already done it or who are yeah. further along that can teach you because if what you're doing is not getting you where you want to go, then yeah. you have to learn a new skill set. And there's only so much that you can do yourself. Right. It's just like typically when a woman is at this point, like women will stretch herself so thin and be able to do everything for everyone around them except for themselves. So when they're at the point where they're like, I can't do this anymore, or at the point where they're just like, I'm fed up, it's because they've exhausted every single avenue. So at this point, it's like, hey, like, what would it look like for you to get a little uncomfortable and go all in on yourself? The best moments in my life have been because I'm like, I'm burning the boats. I'm figuring it out. I'm moving state lines or I'm buying this program. Oh, this is really scary. I'm going to do this. 
or, you know, taking out a loan, you know, like, like the craziest things that I've done to like pay my team or to grow or to, you know, have a new life, right. Have been the greatest awards Did every one of them work out like, no, but definitely taught me so many lessons that shown me that money is like energy and it keeps coming in. Um, and made me have a different perspective on, on life. And it forced me to learn because if I money's on the line and I didn't really have that money in the begin with, to start learning, there's no other excuse. Like I am going to do every single thing possible and learn every single thing that I possibly can to become whatever I need to do because like I'm all in. Right. Learning and implementing, right? I think at the end of the day, you have to, um, you have to be a lover of learning mm -hmm. in life because everything is always going to change just like we evolve as humans. And so you have to learn new skills or new market or new product or whatever it is. Like you should never, not want to learn if you want yeah. to be successful but i think it's um then it's implementing it quickly right it's you can study 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 but you got also like okay let me implement this when i'm not fully comfortable doing it yeah absolutely um what would you say i guess to any woman that's listening to this right now anything you want to leave her with um i guess my motto in life would be something I would say is um, yeah, lean, lean into your fear. Mm, okay. So is whenever I'm just like scared to do something, I'm like, that's when I need to do it. Like if you're really wanting to do something, but it scares the hell out of you, um, I think you should do it. Cause yeah. I think that's when it's been my biggest rewards is when I've stretched myself and I've done something that has made me uncomfortable, but it's always, like you said, I think you can learn from it, which again, either way, that's, it might not be a monetary value, but there's mm -hmm. still there's still something that you gained, which is knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, so I think leaning into your fear and just um, knowing that you can make it work if you really want to make it work. Yeah. Where can people find you, Tasha? Um, you can find me on Instagram. So my Instagram name is Tasha Goins Realtor um, or my website. You can go to uh, homesbytashagoins.com. And who would be your like typical person that would come to you? Cause I know you're based here in um, Arizona, Scottsdale, Phoenix area. So like if, who do you typically represent that they can find you so that they have a little bit of clarity? Um, so I work with everyone. I mean, I've worked with first time home buyers. I've worked with sellers and luxury. So um, if you're just ever looking to understand real estate when it comes to investment investment properties making it your home or selling a property i'm i just feel like i just i'm in the business to help people period yeah she's your go-to girl so definitely reach out to tasha and um thank you so much again for being on here i really appreciate you my so pleasure much. thank you you're welcome um and ladies for anyone that's watching on here like get off your butt get some things happening and give yourself a little bit of grace because i know that if you're listening to this right now you're probably a hard worker like us. And at the same time, um, you're capable of so much more. So we believe in you. You got this. Stretch your wings a little bit, get a little comfortable, lean into your fear and know that if you ever need support, that we're definitely here to support you and cheer you on. I appreciate you so much for listening to this episode. We will see you on the next one.